this is where this car is absolutely spectacular. <laughs> There are 10 incredible cars in the running for this year's Motor Magazine Performance Car of the Year. But there's one that I can't take my eyes off. That irresistible coupe elegance, gorgeous guards red paintwork, and a badge that invokes more passion and performance promise than just about any other. In a sea of stunning machines, the Porsche Cayman GTS 4 liter is the car I've been most excited to get my hands on. because this version has all of the things I love about the standard Cayman and Boxster, but in place of its four-cylinder turbo engine, there's a naturally aspirated four-litre flat six. And the result is spectacular. With that engine right in the middle sat just behind me, the weight distribution is fantastic. You feel like you're right in the middle of the action along with that glorious six cylinder. But when, oh, when you do get to the edges of adhesion, the Cayman will snap at you. Get it right though. And the dynamics on a lovely circuit like this are just heavenly. All that lovely feedback through the steering wheel. Fantastic stopping power and confidence from those huge brakes in all four corners. You've got to be gentle with the power mid corner, but it's got so much grip, you're never going to shake the tail loose with just gas alone. It takes a bit of heavy footed braking mid corner or just being a damn hoon. And because it's the Cayman, the baby brother of the 911, it doesn't feel unwieldy. It feels compact and tiny. I'm not saying the 911 is a handful, but I'm saying the Cayman has an approachableness to it, a friendliness even. What an absolute gem. Get to know the Cayman in this kind of environment and you will become best friends. Somewhat embarrassingly though, the Cayman GTS 4 liter puts me in a slightly awkward situation. You see, some have criticized the four cylinder turbo engines that you get in the rest of the Cayman and Boxster range, but I rather like them. And I've gone further and said the Boxer and Cayman should have always been four-cylinder right from the start. But this return to six-cylinder power in the very latest Cayman version has me thinking maybe I was wrong. But of course, I'll never admit that, so we'll just edit this out. I love everything about this car so far. It just shines on the racing circuit. It has lots of power, not quite as much as the GT4 maybe, but ample. It sounds glorious. It's got the brakes to keep you happy and confident all day. It looks fantastic when it's sitting in the pits, ticking and hot. And of course it's a Porsche, which means it'll do that all day. Perfect is a strong word but the Cayman GTS 4 litre is not perfect. But you'll only realise that problem out on the open road. It might take you a while to find that problem though because there is so much to like about the 4 litre GTS, starting with its cabin. 
The feel is wonderful for a start. It's cozy but not claustrophobic in here. And everywhere you look, there are examples of excellent Porsche design. The materials, Alcantara on the roof lining, suede on the steering wheel and this gear gator, and the digital displays even are just a really lovely sharp resolution and, and more great design there too. There are nice touches like this carbon fiber which requires you to sell all your children and remortgage the house. And this lovely sport chrono package brings a stopwatch that you'd gladly wear on your wrist. Even down to fine details like the way this switch feels when you press it and the way the indicator snaps so perfectly. It's all just so well done. In fact, there's not a lot bad to say about the interior whatsoever. The only black mark is these little switch blanks here, which remind you didn't get one or two options and perhaps you were just a little bit stingy. And the driving position is just near perfect as well. It positions you right in the middle of the car. The seat adjusts to exactly my preferences. It's got plenty of support without being like a GT3 racer. And it all adds to the sense of occasion every time you get in this car. And I keep coming back to that glorious engine, probably my favorite part about this whole car. Perhaps one of the last naturally aspirated flat sixes from Porsche. And if it ever does go out to pasture, it'll be one of the greatest ever. It delivers power in such a wonderful way, totally directed at the driving enthusiast. The power delivery is so linear across the rev range. There's torque where you need it, but if you rev it out to that red line, it's got all of the, the performance right up in those dizzying heights as well. And then there is the noise. I may tire of that dolphin tattoo on my right buttock, and after many years of listening, Aqua's Barbie Girl might not sound quite so sweet anymore, but. I will never, ever tire of that sound. Okay, and uh, I do still love Barbie Girl. Handling through some of these wonderful Victorian roads reminds you why the recipe of rear wheel drive and mid-engine works so well. That weight distribution is just lovely and you feel like you're positioned right in the middle of something really important. I mean, I always love to feel like I'm the center of attention and very important, but that is all the more the case in the Cayman. There's just the right amount of steering feel. At times, I can barely believe it's power assisted at all. It's so intuitive and it's like running your hand over the surface of the road. And the grip is, is fantastic, but you don't feel like it's over grip. You don't feel like you're gonna find that limit and then be spat off into the nearest field. It talks to you all the way through. You know when you're nearing the limit of traction. And it's not overpowered either. It's just, in a word, balance. It's got the right amount of everything. But for all, it's good. And the Cayman GTS 4 liter does a lot very well, we must return to that problem. And that problem lies in the knob. No, no, not, not the knob driving, that knob. The GTS 4 liters gear ratios are incredibly tall. Up to now, I've been using this lovely 4 liter flat six to about 6,000 RPM, but that tachometer tells me I've got another 2,000 RPM to play with. On public roads, that means I'm limited to one, maybe one and a half gears. To fully explain the problem, I need to head back to the track. Right, we're back on track and I'm gonna do a very simple experiment. I'm gonna try and rev the Cayman 4 liter GTS out the red line in every gear. And I'm gonna tell you how fast I'm going. First gear. 70 kilometers now. Second gear. 130, third gear. 
170 something and now I'm going to have to slow down for turn one. If you try to use the Cayman's full potential on the road, there's no two ways about it. You are going to prison. And sadly, your GTS 4 litre is not going with you. The Porsche Cayman GTS 4 litre is almost perfect. Its engine is a masterpiece, its chassis sublime. Its looks hold on to your gaze long after you walk away, and it costs a lot less than a 911. But its insanely tall gear ratios, on Australian roads at least, are the chain around its neck. But like Cindy Crawford's mole, imperfections can be beautiful. Find a road long enough, and the King Cayman is an exceptionally good car. Still not convinced? Well, don't worry, because a PDK is on the way. That promises to be one of the most complete performance cars on the planet.